Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I will be talking a little bit about my profession actually, or more specifically, how do we do things underwater. I do teach such a course specifically on uh, methods of maritime archaeology, but here with the help of some of the footages from current archaeological and past archaeological work in which I have participated, I would like to try to tell you a little bit of how we gather the information, what sort of information we are interested in, what do we do with that information. But most of the focus of this video is going to be specifically how we gather the data, how do we excavate underwater, how we gather the data. And probably in the future there will be videos on how we process the gathered data. So without further ado, let us go and uh, start talking and looking at some of the methods used in maritime archaeology. The first step at the beginning of each season is to open up the site to remove the sandbags, the geotextile and the overburden that was used to cover and protect the wreck during the winter months. We protected both from the storms, mostly, but also from Teredona Valleys, which tends to destroy timber structures rather quickly. It's amazing how quickly, in fact. The next stage, of course, is to set up the water dredges. That's what we use. There are also airlifts, but in the shallow waters in which we're working, the water dredge works far better. It is much more easy to control. It is much gentler. This specific example is constructed from easily and cheaply available materials in your friendly local hardware store where you can buy uh, PVC plumber supplies. They are, of course, commercially available examples. They are only the head of the beast costs in the vicinity of uh, 350 plus dollars. Uh, while if I remember correctly, we spent about 50 to build this one. As you see, we always remove our fins when working underwater. The fin is an extremely dangerous tool that can destroy an archaeological site in no time at all. It is hard, you don't always feel what it is doing behind you, and it is extremely damaging to stratigraphy, to uh, tender artifacts, and especially to the tender timbers. So that's why I never, ever allow any diver on the site with fins on. The blue pipe, the reinforced hose, allows us to work without the whole heavy dredge uh, hitting the archaeological site. It gives us flexibility, it is quite uh, easy to operate. Usually it is within less than six feet long. The longer this one is, of course, it is easy. the easier it is to reach out of the way uh, bits and nooks and crannies on the wreck, but correspondingly, the weaker the suction of the water dredge is. The water dredge is not really the excavation tool. The water dredge is simply the wheelbarrow of underwater archaeology, the bucket. It carries away what you have excavated, but we essentially hand feed it. Uh, the only thing that enters the water dredge is the overburden that we feed by hand into it. For the actual excavation, as you can see here, uh, one of my colleagues working, we use such elementary things as trowels, just like in land archaeology, incidentally. We also use paint brushes. as here, because these we switch to them when we have something that is particularly sensitive. For example, this fragment of rope that you see in the middle of the screen or the fragments next to it. Paint brushes do not have to be good quality. All they have to do is to be cheap and to be widely available because they tend to get lost quite quickly and in large numbers. Even the cheapest Chinese um, Paint brushes are doing a great job in archaeology. Of course, it wouldn't be archaeology without taking measurements. Uh, anything that we photograph is always with a scale, and in this case, the meter, the folding ruler, is used to record the stratigraphy of the site and the deposition of layers. Although this is a closed-in archaeological site, there still is very distinct uh, stratigraphy inside it. Uh, 
fragile objects like, for example, the bottom of a drawer that here we're putting into a box, also need to be protected on their way to the surface. We normally raise them in after using them, uh, something to give them support. In this case, obviously, it is a Tupperware type plastic box. I don't know how many hundreds of them we have bought. We remove them in stages. First, it is removed out of the excavation trench so that we can continue working. They're put aside and in this case, because this is an extremely fragile woven grass, essentially. It is supported by a plexiglass, as you can see under it. And on top of this, this is going to be protected with a plastic carrying box. It is used in the fishing industry in Bulgaria. At least that's where we get our copies, uh, our examples, not copies. And uh, it is used to cover and protect the find. This is what the archaeologist is doing here before such a moment as we obtain all the proper supplies to raise the artifact to the surface. Generally speaking, when you're recovering material, you want it to suffer as little agitation as is humanly possible to achieve. Because they are fragile, they are waterlogged, they are softened, they are so easy to damage and be destroyed. So that's why I would argue that one of the most important specialists on an archaeological site are the conservators. And for this season, we were really blessed by having some outstanding, world-renowned uh, names participating. What I'm doing here actually is recording a chain plate on the side. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, archaeology is uh, measurement, sketches, drawings, measurements. What we use to draw on the white uh, sheets that you see is mylar attached uh, to whatever flat surface to support it. You can use uh, pencils, just normal blend pencils. In this case, we're using arti artists' um, leads on their own because they seem to work quite well underwater and that's Prior to that, we were using mechanical pencils, but in this case, for some reason, this pencil is using much better. Nowadays, of course, the latest cream of modernity is to use photogrammetry for the document, 3D photogrammetry for the documentation of an archaeological site. And this is what you see in the insert. It is the 3D model that was constructed by my colleague, uh, Pavel Gurgiev. Thank you ever so much for watching this channel, for uh, supporting with your views. Thank you for liking it, assuming you do like it. Please do subscribe to it. Please return for the next video. And I'm looking forward to answering any comments and any questions that you may have. I wish you a most wonderful rest of the day.